هذا من يا اخوان اللي طلع لنا؟ Zoom sucks. And here's five reasons why. Number one, privacy. This is the one of the main reasons Zoom sucks. It's privacy. Zoom pranksters, such as the one in the beginning of the video, and more, invade Zoom classes a lot. And most of the time, it's not even the teacher's fault. This is because people can name themselves different things and get away with it, even if the teacher has to admit them in. Zoom has a password and meeting ID, but those already get leaked by the students. There really is no easy way to block slash blacklist people who aren't students on the standard Zoom app. This is really bad. Zoom has a really bad interactive graphic user interface and doesn't have much of an enticing design. Another bad thing about its interface is that it's not the same on all its devices. This makes it extremely annoying for the teacher to give directions to the student because it might not be the same for him or her. Take for example the raise hand feature. This feature might seem simple and intuitive but it actually isn't. On some devices, the raise hand is in options and on some it is in participants. Zoom's GUI differs per device, not just a little, a lot. Zoom has become one of the biggest platforms that is being used today for education and business. This is due to the worldwide pandemic and the coronavirus. Everybody is stuck at home and we have to find some way to interact with each other. So that's why we are using Zoom and mostly Google Classroom for e-learning. But Zoom does not have that many features and it's not that interactive with students and other people who just use it for businesses maybe. So there's no color um, contrast, there's no good features and Basically, the only features breakout rooms, probably. Zoom also does not offer AI, which includes features such as recognition using scanners or other artificial intelligence technology. This makes the software less interactable, and it does not really indicate a step further in online learning. Of course, Zoom has many features that are useful to us, but there are no advanced features involving artificial intelligence in some sort. Zoom is not integratable with any other site making it not usable to its maximum potential. When it is not integratable with any other site, students and teachers could waste a lot of time moving through different sites to assign the exact same work. You could be doing dozens more things with just one site of integration. This would greatly ease teachers work and this is a big waste of time. So now we've qualified that Zoom sucks, but we can do certain things to make it better. Me and my team designed an app, a Zoom app, to help teachers and students when they're being educated. We call this app Flash. We first thought of this feature because of all the deficiencies in Zoom. So our solution is better for a multitude of reasons. This is because we're going to have way more interactive features than Zoom, and it can help students stay more focused and more engaged, just like in an actual classroom environment. These interactive features include color contrast and integration with Google Classroom. This will keep the student from going off topic or on other sites. We also have some AI tracking programs to raise hand recognition. One of our most important features is a feature that lets the teacher look at the student's screen. If one of the students is off topic or a teacher suspects that a student is on a different website, they can click on the student and view his or her current screen to see what they are doing. We also decided to add a raise hand gesture to it. This helps the computer see if a student is raising their hand and if they are, it will alert their teacher. One of my favorite features about this app is the whitelist feature. This solves the problem of pe random people just joining your Zoom class. This is because you can block some people from joining your Zoom class by blocking their IP specifically, instead of having to manually kick them out after the Zoom meeting starts. This could save a lot of potential time. The scenario goes as follows. On the first day, the teacher doesn't whitelist anybody, so all the students can join. Then, the teacher whitelists all the students. 
so that they only they can join the Zoom. This way, no potential trollers or hackers can join the call. Our UI consists of a basic online call layout, including small rectangles for each of the participants to be seen in. There is also a little arrow on the bottom of the screen, and when you pull it up, you can see the options that are offered in relation to the video, audio, and other aspects of the software. First, there is a little chat bubble on the left side of the menu, which you can click on for the chat to pop up on the right side. Our chat format works like a messaging platform, in which there are little chat bubbles for each text, with the corresponding participant's name shown below each one. Moving to the right, we have the video button, which allows participants to turn their video on and off. When you left click on the video button, you see a pop-up of two features incorporated into the software, which is green screen mode and self invisibility mode. Green screen mode allows participants to enable a virtual background, while self invisibility mode allows you to hide self view. Afterward, the microphone button allows you to turn your mic on and off, and by left clicking on it, you can adjust your microphone volume accordingly. Lastly, on the far right of the menu, you can see an icon that looks like a person, which allows you to see the participants on the right hand side. If you are a participant, you can rename yourself by clicking your name on the participants pop up. The first site that we want to integrate with Flash is Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a site developed by Google to help teachers assign assignments wirelessly on the internet. If we integrate this with Flash, then we can have the teachers assign assignments on Zoom and the students can complete them on Zoom so that the students don't need to move to other sites and don't get off topic. On top of this, teachers can use other sites like Scratch and Class Dojo to further integrate their experience in Zoom and make a whole lot better experience for students and teachers and make an ease of life software that everybody can use. The new AI in our app Flash helps us create many new features for the teacher. For example, the raise hand feature allows us to detect if a student is raising their hand by having the computer look at the student's camera and seeing if they are raising their hand with machine learning. This means that we can easily help alert if a student is raising their hand or if they are stretching that means the teacher will not be alerted as the computer will detect that and just let them be. And that could means we can incorporate more features and expand on this, such as if the student is stretching, their camera can automatically be turned off. In the research aspect behind our project, the way we got the idea was from our personal experiences with e-learning. We personally all are in school and we're all looking at e-learning and we realized that's not that interactive. And also, the main platforms that we, we used were Google Classroom and Zoom. So this gave us an idea. We could make an app that combined both of the, app, both of the platforms, and it could be more interactive than Zoom. But you could also have Google Classroom built in, so it'd be way easier for teachers and students. And we also researched behind Zoom and all the features it has, like the breakout rooms, and all those other features that it had, so we can implement them in our design, but we can also add more features. And the features we wanted to add were like, um, for example, we wanted to do the color contrast feature and we also wanted to do the hand raise feature. So we just researched in Zoom and we decided to add more features and make sure the features in Zoom already were included. Also, we also had to research the business aspect of this, but we weren't mainly focusing on this business aspect since you know, we won't really use the business aspect, but we also researched on that and we made a slide on that. And, but we mainly focused on our features and the main UI for the project. So that's a wrap on this project in general. Um, there are many other aspects of the problems um, project we worked on, like the business aspect of it, but most of it is in the slides. So after that, we're all done. So this is our um, submission for the hackathon entry. I'm the team leader, Soresh Pramanik, and this is what we submitted. Also, there will be a demo on presentation day.